Now let's have a look at software architecture itself. What is it? How do you describe it? Now the definition of software architecture that crops up again and again um, is that uh, software architecture is a set of structures needed to reason about the software system which comprise of the software elements, the relationships between them and the property of both the elements and the relationships. So basically it's the, um, the components of a system and the relationships between them. Uh, sorry, the components, their properties, and the relationships between the components. And that, that is a, a general description of an architecture. That doesn't apply, sorry, it applies to more than just software development because you can also apply that same um, definition to physical architecture or, for example, a house. So that definition, we'll use that, as I say, it crops up again and again. Now, the, in, in developing a system, we have to deal with uh, the difference between the problem space and the solution space. Design deals with the problem space, all right? Trying to establish what, exactly what the problem is and uh, which problem you're trying to solve. Development deals with the solution space. That is, we have, we have a proposed solution and we're simply going to implement it. Architecture could reasonably easily fit into either of those, okay? It, it, it straddles them both because the architecture designs something, um, and the architecture and the, the, the problem sort of uh, interact. Uh, there is this negotiation between them about just exactly what the problem is. Well, the nature of the problem depends on, on possible solutions. So that's, that's something there. Engineering. Classical engineering, uh, including software engineering, has normally been concerned about the solution space. That starts from the assumption that somebody uh, understands, somebody knows what has to be done, and now you're just simply being told to do it. Now, within that solution space, uh, an architecture is designed, and there is, but there is there is no algorithmic way of actually uh, coming up with a. Uh, an architecture. There is a certain amount of design and creativity in it and we will deal with that in good time. So you got that general idea that uh, we have a, a problem space where the main interest is to try to discover exactly what the problem is and we have a solution space where we're simply implementing a solution. Now architecture uh, is one of those things that fits across the both of those. Now, in this subject, we'll teach you good practices for software architecture, good sound practices. Now, despite it being creative, or a certain amount of creativity, uh, is, is, there are some things that work better than other things. So the first thing is it helps enormously to understand who the stakeholders are and, and what they care about, all right? We'll develop an architecture gradually because usually an architecture is a sufficiently complex thing that we have to break it down in from a high level view down to lower level views. It's very difficult to develop an architecture starting from the fine detail. It's much better to decompose the problem from a very high level into major concerns and then, then uh, finer, finer granularity concerns. You should be able to recognize the patterns of architectures and apply them. Uh, that makes life a lot easier if you uh, understand that, oh, this is a web system, web systems have this particular characteristic pattern, so uh, we'll try that. Um, and same with, say, embedded systems or um, highly secure systems, that kind of thing. Now, an architecture determines the qualities of a system. Now, for, uh, quality, for example, is how secure is the system, or how reliable is the system, or how testable, how usable is this system? It's really hard to make a system secure if it was not designed to be secure. Retrofitting qualities into a system is very difficult. So the architecture is the place where that happens and where you do that. And it's very difficult to change it afterwards. Now architectures last a long time, so in designing an architecture you can make really big mistakes and um, have them to be fairly permanent. And this has happened in a lot of systems. Um, either the architecture was ill-conceived or, uh, as more likely, uh, the architecture was created in one set of circumstances, but the circumstances have changed and the architecture no longer suits that. Nevertheless, 
we have to try and do our best at the time. Now, no one gets it perfect. Um, even the best of uh, architects, uh, software architects, don't get it perfect. Um, and a, a increasingly established principle of the industry is that you get your work reviewed. So um, we have to be able to evaluate an architecture and reason about how it does, does it do its job and how does it do its job. Now a lot of people need to know about the architecture. Um, all the stakeholders in different forms uh, need to know, for example, um, the end users may need to know, certainly the developers will need to know, other interested parties will need to know. I mean, developers, you're not dealing with one coherent bunch of developers. Um, you're probably dealing with um, several different um, groups of developers. Testers may need to know, documenters need to know. A lot of people need to know different things about the architecture. And the interesting question is, how do you tell them? So we'll deal with that as well. In the topics that we cover, um, first off the rank is uh, stakeholders and all that. So understanding the context of the problem. Who are the stakeholders? What are their interests? Um, what are the constraints around the, uh, the problem or solution? What are the risks involved in uh, developing the solution? And what are the risks that uh, the final system faces? Now this is common to any project. It shouldn't be strange. We'll go through architectural views, the conceptual view, the execution view, the implementation view. Um, they are the three uh, main views. There sometimes is, is included a fourth. I haven't really found it that necessary. Um, but we'll also deal with scenarios because scenarios are the mechanism with which you evaluate the different views. We we'll talk about uh, architectural patterns, we'll talk about architectural qualities, we'll talk about evaluating architectures, documenting architectures, and then there are several, um, several lectures on specialised architectures. Um, again, more about that later.